Hello guys, welcome to Physics TV Global. I hope you all will be fine. I'm really very grateful to you all for your great response on my previous videos. I hope you will increase the rate of response on my coming videos too. Today I gonna explain very important topic, cathode ray oscilloscope, which is also known as CRO. I am pretty sure that after watching this video completely, without missing any part of it, you will be able to know well about cathode ray oscilloscope and its proper use in physics. And you will be able to know about each and every part of it with its function by the explanation on the whiteboard, simulated activity and animated video. I am pretty sure that after watching this video, you will be able to do simple calculations work for phonic voltage, time period, frequency, amplitude, phase of waves, and making comparison between loud, faint noise and pleasant sound by electric signal of it. So let's go towards the whiteboard. Dear students, first I will explain that why do we need the CRO in physics. So first thing very common what we used that is the EMF. You know about the EMF. Total voltage, total electric potential energy of any electric source. Rather you have a cell, if you have a cell and if we need to find out how much voltage it has we can get with the help of CRO. If we have the battery then also we can find the voltage of that battery with the help of CRO. If you have power supply, rather it is the DC power supply, rather it is the AC power supply, we also can find the voltage of both of them. So it means this is the first basic use. So not only the EMF, but at the same time, if there is an alternating current, AC, if there's alternating current, how do we need to study its peak voltage, peak voltage, all right, its frequency, its time period, then also the device what was needed, that is the CRO. At the same time, not only the AC current and the DC current, we can get the difference of both of them with the help of a, that CRO device. At the same time, we also can measure the voltage of the DC currents with the CRO. So, so at the same time, it will come in your mind that voltmeter we also use. We can use a voltmeter just for the measurement of the EMF of the voltage, but the range of the voltmeter is very less as compared to the CRO. And second important thing is that here we study with the graphical presentation. Rather, we are going to find out, work or analyze the AC current. Rather, we are going to work on the DC current. And the one thing more, that is the sound. We use very frequently CRO just to analyze about the sound, that rather the different properties of sound. Sound is a loud, it is a loud, it is a faint. Okay, what is its frequency? Pitch time period, etc. So also we need the device that is the CRO. But how we can analyze these all properties of the sound? First important thing is, first you have to convert the sound into electric signals. Then we will apply it, will provide as an input to the CRO and it will provide, it will provide you what? Rather you are working on AC, rather you are working on DC, rather you are working on sound. All these when we are going to analyze, are we going to do some calculations, analyzations. First of all, what we did, one after providing the input to the CRO, CRO will provide us the graphical representation. Graphical representation. This is a very important. That's why this is the easy method that with the CRO, here you can see here the output display. So you can see the grid here. The, like a graph paper. So these grids here, we get what? We get the waves. It can be different shape that we will discuss one by one. 
okay after discussing its parts that how we can analyze discuss and mathematically calculate all these physical quantities what i have discussed okay after this it means on the behalf of this we can say that how we can define that device very simple so cr is what this is the electronic device sometimes you will also see in some books with some teachers they usually use also the electrical device but the proper thing is electronic device so you will see that what it is the electronic device with the help of which we can study about voltage about ac and dc current and the different properties of the sound how graphically so this is a cro after that now we will move one by one two words its parts so listen very carefully the important part of a cro so first thing the first part of the cro is that is the what is this yeah i think you got it this is the filament and also we used to say tungsten filament tungsten tungsten and filament all right then this tungsten if we provide the supply to the tungsten filament what like the ac supply okay so what will be happen it is the same thing that when you are going to provide the supply electric supply to the electric lamp it starts glowing so the the same thing so here then when we, we provide the supply to the filament first part filament okay it will start to heat up it will start to glow glow means that it will start to produce the uh, beam of electrons a particle will starts to come out from it all right after this then the second part important part after the filament is what that is the cathode and you know the meaning of cathode cathode what cathode and anode cathode which can store the electrons the reservoir of the electrons so here as the filament will produce a metal it is a mission of the electrons that will be collected by the that uh, the cathode and just right after the cathode we also placed what a grid what is a grid here you can see grid that it provide a path that then after getting after hitting after collection of the electrons the particles then it will also start to emit out the particles and just to give a proper path a smooth path you know uh, just for the observations we provide a path to it and that path hope we provide with the help of a part of cro that is called grid grid it means so this is the combination of the three components what we have discussed which are the components filament cathode ray and the grid actually this cathode ray and the grid they are what they are the same uh, means here if you say that lie at this place means it's not necessary that here we as before here connected together both are connected together we also can make them separate also in some diagrams you will see they are separate and some diagrams they are connected together but batteries connected together because their function is same we just provide what these two we provide the negative potential negative potential to what to the cathode ray and the uh, sorry cathode and the grid negative potential why it pressure this now how you will get to know why it is the need to provide the negative potential as already negative electrons are coming towards it okay so after this then we use what the anode and you know the meaning of anode the reservoir we collect the the positive charge we supply the post we give positive supply to the anodes so here like after this grid we use thrice of the anodes usually okay so first the first anode that is called the pre accelerator pre accelerator means that what what the electrons are coming from here it will give a little uh, increase uh, increase its energy increase its speed means it, it will accelerate it more that's why after this the first anode after the pre accelerator then just near to it there is a another anode and that is called the focusing anode what means a focusing anode means it will focus focus what what the beam of rays are coming will comes out from the pre accelerator that will be focused by the second anode and then after this 
this ray it will go it will enter to the third anode and the name of third anode is what it is again the accelerator means what it will do it will do the same job as the first anode do because here we provide the less potential energy all have positive all are positive all are positively uh, we will apply the positive potential to all of them but here the no, we provide less potential here just it focused means it means they make us in the proper way in the proper beam then it's it's sad push towards the last anode third anode and here we provide the more positive potential okay and after this till here mean the combination of how many parts we have discussed yet so you can see number one filament cathode grid first anode means the, uh, the this pre-accelerator and number five is the focusing anode and number six is the again the accelerator so the combination of all these components keep in mind actually in the Julian the exam they sometimes the cave that you wear you need to draw the diagram also so the combination of all these components what it is called the combination of all these six components they forms one thing that is called electron gun electron gun because whatever the functions I have discussed over here the main purpose were to provide that after the end of the this third anode we must need a proper and very fast moving electrons beams okay so this is the function of the electron gun okay so if we look in the diagram see the parts here see this is the a filament above the block diagram this is the uh, cathode and then if you look over here see they use the heater in place of the filament both have the same function because in the heater also we have the multiple filaments after that here you see what is this the cathode so when we, we are going to draw the block diagrams you can make anything so okay any blocks diagram and is suitable and you can give a name that yes this is a heater as we know heater is this this is the symbol for the heater but you can show the block diagram you can represent it it is allowed in the exam after this then see here also the this anodes for the anodes here see that it's different plan the different way to represent it here the different way to represent so this is yeah here if you see there are the two four anodes what means of four so here in this diagram the last two anodes that is the accelerating because here in this will increase uh, means some the this speed of the beam of electrons and this will this will give the more push more speed will be increased and very highly why i mean fast moving beam of electrons after this will get but usually as i told you before we take the three more than 90 percent we take the three anodes but if there are four given then no need no no need to worry about it okay it is its function is the same as that it will just accelerate it will just increase the speed okay all right so this was the this these are the two parts what one the electron gun and the second we have discussed what that is the anodes i mean three different types of anodes all the anodes have the positive potential all the uh, this um, uh, this cathode has the cathode and the grid have negative potential and we're providing to the filament AC supply after this a very important place the concept of the plates but before going concept to the plates what I have discussed before for example this is the electron gun and from I mean all which which consists of the six components what I have discussed before so the beam of ray very fast beam of ray is coming okay and suppose it reached where on the photographic film I'll add this uh, here photographic film we also can use but if we talk about now here the proper shape then the CRO so here what we'll use the screen fluorescent screen it which is coded with the phosphorus so what will be happen when the electrons will hit here we will get the spot pay attention I'm going to discuss very important thing in that topic which is usually the, in the, the examiner is going to touch this concept so this spot means the light spot it's, it's observes its forms on the output display the screen now sometimes we see that or if I say at which time it will be bright bright spot at which time it will be dim or timber okay this is the spot so what happened it totally depends on the what it depends on the negative potential so where we have where we have applied the negative potential to the cathode cathode or the grid so they have the negative potential 
So listen carefully. Better if I take you to the diagrams that here, just see what happens. The diagrams that no better to draw the another diagram. Let's so look over here. Suppose if I take here that this is the cathode. Here we have the filament, all right? Here we have the grid. Okay. Now, as we have discussed, now it has a negative potential. So if here the potential is more, if we're giving more potential, but I mean which more? The negative potential is maximum, or we can the more. Then what will be happen? Negative, the electrons which are coming, rushing towards it, rushing towards the cathode, they are also negatively charged particles. So what will be happen? If it will be maximum, repulsive force will be maximum. And as a result, this beam, okay, the hair, this will be less. This intensity will be decreased. And if intensity will be decreased, what will be happen? It will be dim. The brightness will be low. So it's opposite. What opposite? That if the uh, this uh, negative potential is maximum, then the brightness it will be the lower it will be the minimum okay and just why i told you due to the singularity due to the repulsive force less number of particles they will succeed to go away or move towards the anodes and in the second way if suppose negative potential is less second part if it is less what will be happen then the repulsive force will be decreased and the more electrons will succeed to go towards the anode and ultimately will reach over here on the screen so when they reach the screen more electrons what will be happen we will succeed to get the bright spot where at the center if this is the grid okay then where at the center we will get like over here here just to see this is the spot at the center, so this will be brighter. If means the negative potential will be less, it will be brighter. If negative potential will be uh, will be low, uh, uh, will be low. Uh, then if it is a low, more will be brighter. And if it is the maximum, then what will happen? It will be the dim, or it will be not more brighter. Wise less number of electrons will flow from it. All right. After this, now the important concepts. We will discuss that is regarding to the plates. So pay attention, listen carefully. Usually students make mistakes in these concepts. Rather, this is the question of regarding structure question, MCQs questions, and even in the calculations words where you we utilize these concepts. So we have basically two types of plates. First, I will explain you that X plates. What are the X plates? X plates, as you can means analyze that from the name X that. What is X? Means horizontal, long X axis. Horizontal or horizontal plates. But in, but in fact, if we see practically, if, uh, uh, the physically it's look, they are looking vertical. These plates, I mean, if you're going to draw, like if you look over here, X plates, okay, these are the X plates. So see, the look is what? Vertical. Physically, they are looking vertically, but they are actually the horizontal plates. But if you are going to draw the um, like the the block diagram, then it's not necessary to show the uh, proper plates. You can just show the lines. Okay, just here we have to present the blocks. And we said this is the the x plates and horizontal plates. So what is the function of that? The function of these plates is what the x plates are horizontal plates that on the output display. Output display it shows the deflection. What this part, this central spots it will go forward and the backward. It will move horizontally. Horizontally. That's why these plates are also called horizontal deflecting plate. Horizontal deflecting deflecting plates. Okay. All right. One function. So again, listen. What are the X plates? X plates means horizontal plates. Horizontal plates mean horizontal deflecting plates. Horizontal deflecting plates mean it will give the deflection horizontally to the spots along the X axis. But another important thing over here is the practically, if we say that we see that the, the shape of these plates are the verticals. All right. After this, now we will move. Yeah. Then there's another function for this. Which functions that when we provide the input, where it produces the horizontal deflection. At the same time, sometimes the examiner asks you about the sawtooth voltage. First, see what why sawtooth. Okay, we know that this is the saw. 
okay and see it's the teeth okay so the shape of this when we get the output when we are providing the input to the CRO at the X in the X plates so horizontal plates we see what that it produce the soft tooth voltage that I will also show you explain you in the uh, video in the simulated activity or the animated video Okay, but you keep in mind that what that what when we place, when we attach, when we provide the input to the X players, it also produces the voltage, and that voltage are called sub tooth voltage. Actually, the circuit inside it that is called a time base, time base circuit, time base generator or time base generator circuit, which is inside the CRO that produces that sub tooth. Okay. So at the, and at the same time, also keep in mind, which we'll also show you in the uh, animated video where I will where I will give you the practice how to take the readings that this is considered what the time base. Time base means that we use very frequently one terminal that is called the time base, which is related to the X plates, means the horizontal deflecting plates. So please keep in mind this concept and now we will go ahead towards the vertical plates. Okay, so what is the vertical? Means the Y plates. Y plates. Y plates are very important. What are they? But the first thing, because Y plates, so it means they are along Y axis. If along Y axis, it means they will deflect the they will deflect the spot how much? Vertically upward, downward, up, down, up, down, like this. The means when we pull up, provide the input to the Y plates. What we will observe when X plates are not working, it is a zero. Now, just I'm talking about the Y plates. Think, consider that the X plate is off, it's not working. We're not providing any supply to the X plates. That's why, so here, when we provide the uh, input uh, to the Y plate, what it gives us, it gives us the movement to the spot vertically up and down. Again, okay, that will be more clear when I will show you in the animated video how to take the ratings and how it works. Second important thing regarding to the Y places, which you must need to keep in mind that whatever the uh, quantity we are going to study, analyze. For example, we're, working, we're going to work on the AC current. Then AC current will be supplied to the Y plates. We're going to work or uh, observe the DC voltage. So we will provide this to the Y players. We're working about any property of the sound. So sound will be provided where to the Y players. Okay, and waxes and which are also called vertical deflecting plates. Second name, vertical deflecting plates. Okay, and as before I said about the horizontally deflecting plate, what was the, the, this, the knob for that? What we use the button for that? That was the time base. For here, we use the voltage gain. So very important, keep in mind, I will use now and, uh, in the same lesson later, voltage gain. So what is the voltage gain? It means voltage gain is the connecting point of the Y plate. That if we want to, if we need to provide the signals which we need to study, whether it is from the AC, DC, or the sound, we have to provide to the Y plates. It means we have to provide it to the voltage gain. Okay, so Y plates gives us the concept of the voltage gain. Okay, go ahead. After this, now, now as we have discussed that when the X plates or horizontal different plates, it's give the um, um, deflection horizontally and Y plates, it's give the deflection vertically. So if we turn on both together at the same time, and yes, if both are not working, then we get only spot. So three conditions keep in mind. If X and Y are off, then we get the spot here on the screen, only one spot. If if we just use only the X plates, then what we'll get, we get here the line, here uh, we'll get the horizontal deflection. And if X is off and only Y is on, then we will see the deflection upward downwards. It will see the, the particles will move, it will show the vertical deflection up and down. But if we turn on both together, on together, then what will be happen? Then it will show, because at the same time, when it will move horizontally the vertically hook, the particles, the beam of electrons, when at the same time it will move vertically horizontally, then ultimately it will give the shape of a, that sine wave. That I will show you just at the end 
uh, where uh, with the help of a simulation activity, I will show you that how this sine wave forms when the ray coming from the X plates is, um, um, is deflect horizontally and coming from the Y plates vertically when they combine together, how they gain the form of this shape, sine wave, sinusoidal wave. Okay. So after this, now this is the time just to go towards the animated videos where I will explain you very easily, very well, even this is the difficult part that how to take the readings, observation after getting this means at the output, how we can get the time period, how we can get the frequency, okay, and how we can um, analyze the sound properties. So mathematically, all these things Way I will explain to you in a very easy and interesting way with the help of an animated video. So let's move towards animated video. Okay guys, so look at the diagram. Here you can see in the output display, in the grid form, in the graph form, see this is the spot. When this spot exists, we have discussed before that when both, this is the Y, Y players, so Y deflecting players terminals, which I gave you the name what? Y gain, Y gain. And this is the X deflection planes connecting point, the knob, K and OB knob it is called. Okay, so this is called time base. So this is the time base related to the X axis, related to the time factor. And this is the Y gain related to the voltage. So here we will adjust the value that how much value we are going to consider along Y axis for the one division for the one box. And in the same way here we will consider we will select that how much value we are going to consider for any observation along X axis mean how much time we are going to take um, uh, for the one box for the one grid. Okay. And here the time usually we take for what? in the milliseconds for these X players and for the Y gain we take in the voltage V for one division. Just now uh, look at the uh, watch video L. So here you can see the display of the values of the gain i told you the gain gain means that here if we uh, at the right now it's adjusted the white this you see there was a white line towards the two mean it i have adjusted this at the two the two volt it means that the one vertically one box will be equal to two voltage per division means per per box per one grid okay in the same way so this is for the x this i will show you later so just go ahead so this is also like a Y inputs mean this is behind this mean when we if we need to study the AC current, the DC current, the sound characteristics, we have to connect, we have to provide the supply over here. As I told you before on the whiteboard explanation that always we provide the input data, input signals which we need to study where to the Y plates. All right, so just go ahead and watch the video keenly. All right, just now look here, the, I, I attached here, what the cell, one cell, only one cell, and I, if one cell is attached here, here you'll just see which thing is going to on, only the vertical axis or the Y gain is on, at which we have just at the two, okay, so it will now, it will show this spot, see, spot first before, and it was when both was off, it was the center, now as we turn on the, this Y gain, when the vertical players knob, so what happens? This spot just moves upward toward the y axis. Where so start from this zero from the center origin, one box, two box, and two point something. Uh, it seems to be that it's a little less than the half, so maybe 2.4, maybe 2.3. Let's see what the computer radius. Suppose that if it is two, then how much will be the voltage? Two multiplied by two, four voltage this for this cell. If it is at 2.4, so 2.4 multiplied by 2, so that will be the voltage of that cell. Okay, just go ahead, watch the video.
Docker, let's see the what they have taken. The computer has taken 2.4. I mean, not only two boxes, one box, two box, and less, little less than half box. This one, so I mean 0.4. Half is 0.5, so little less 0.4. So 2.4 box, and we have adjusted it at 2 volt. So 2 times 2.4, so it will be 4.8 volt. What the EMF that cell? What we have connected to the Y plates? Go ahead. So observe this. Observe carefully what happens over here that when we change the polarity, see this is the negative here, positive here. If negative is this side, in right side we are positive, the spot is at the top towards the positive axis. Now when we change the polarity, if we change the polarity, positive will come on the left side, the negative will come on the right side, then see this will come down towards the bottom sides towards the negative side means the polarity will be changed but of course the voltage it must it will remain the same so from here see one box two box and again same 2.4 so there will be same voltage as it was before so just by changing the polarity here the directions will be opposite cycle will be reversed all right so next thing is what that if we change if we change the voltage from 2 to 4, then what will be happen? That if the one box is 4, then of course it will it will comes it will comes down because what the cell is same. Well, you didn't change the cell. The voltage total voltage is the same. But if here we are showing that that one box, the value of the one box, one good, we are going to increase. So if we increase, what will be happen? Of course, it will comes down. Just watch. Look what happens that when we increased 2 to 4, it just comes when it was before here, now it's come over here because now from the center, if we go here, 1, 1 point, one point something, 1.2, 1 1.2 1 multiplied by 4, it will be same 4.8 as it was before. So in the same way, if we if we increase, it means it should be the mind that when we increase the voltage gain, the amplitude it will be it decreases. Just go ahead. Now, just say here what happens. Now, the Y gain is 0. Y gains off. If Y gain is off, and this also here, the, the this time base um, means the X, def, X deflecting place is also off. So, what spots? Spots come at the 0. Why? It means that still the electron gun is in working conditions. We are providing the supply to the filament. So, the electrons are coming, passing off of the uh, nodes, and going to strike with the fluorescent tube, and we're getting spot over here. Now just see if we turn on the uh, this place, the horizontal deflecting place, what will be happen and how we get the readings. Okay, just enjoy the reading and learn easily. Just see okay, what happens that now when the time base is at 5, 5 what? MS millisecond always mostly 98 persons we take the time units than the milliseconds for in on the CRO. So this is the 10 5 milliseconds. And if we see the total time in one sweep from here till here, from beginning to the end, how many boxes we have? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Six boxes. So 6 or 1 is equal to 5, 6 times 5, it will be 30, 30 what? 30 milliseconds. What do you mean? As a unit, second. So what you will do? You will just multiply it with the 10 to the power minus 3 or divide by 1000. So it will be 0 0.03 seconds. All right, just go ahead.
see now when where we provide when the AC current and at the same time now before in the beginning I gave you the example I verified that when the, the, that time only voltage gain was on and we got the vertical division up and down and then I showed you only the horizontal deflections okay where we get the time of the swan sweep and so on so on and now see when both are on now here the vertical deflection plates horizontal deflection plates both are on then how we can analyze we study the different properties of the AC current we are providing to the Y plates uh, to what will be happen well, now we can find the peak voltage till over here to the peak the crest of the wave and we can find the the wave uh, this time period for one wave from this point to this point the one wave this point to this point the two waves so two uh, both the options we have if we find the time from this to this for one wave this will be the time period in milliseconds then we can convert it into the seconds our second option mostly what we take take all of the I mean all, all along what the wave is given from beginning to the end how many waves we have one two two waves so two waves what is the time for two waves one box two three four five and six not complete six one two three four five so five point eight or five point seven little less than more than half le but less than of course complete so what it will be I mean if we can consider five point eight or seven let's see what the computer rate and if we get till here the time then if we need the time period when for the one wave time this is time for the two waves so we will just divide by two if you just divide by two in this way you will succeed to get the time for the one wave in the, this way you will get the time period and from the time period we can get the frequency so just go ahead Now just see if I change here if I change the time base from 10 to 20 milliseconds per divisions then what you think what can be happen why simple if the here the I mean the value for the time base it will be increased here the time period will be decreased I mean the frequency will be increased so just look over here it's a simple calculation what we have discussed before no need to talk about this you know well you can check out by uh, pausing the video okay just go ahead when the time the time uh, increase from the time base so what will be happen with the shape of the waves I mean how the frequency will be increased observe practically let me look the diagram carefully it's 10 Still sit down. Just feel how it will increase now. It will go towards 20. Then you have to observe that what will be happen at the same time. Go ahead. Just look carefully. It's going to be increased now from 10 to see it has increased from 10 to 20. As it goes to 20, what happened? Look over here. Before there are the two waves. Now one wave, two wave, three wave, and fourth waves. It becomes twice. As it becomes twice over here, it becomes also the twice. Just look, have a look once again. See, it was a 10. See here the time base. See here the shape of waves. Now it is going to move towards the 20. See, at the 20 what happens? It becomes double. So here the number of waves also becomes double. Okay, now last one thing board. Let's see that if we turn off X or Y players, then what will be happen? Look.
lock here. What happens? This is what? Off. Who? Horizontally deflecting plates, X plates. Time base is off. So when time base is off, voltage gain is there. So what will be happen? Vertically, vertical deflections we will see on the output display. So this is all about what we have discussed. Okay, on the whiteboard, I'm sure that you got it well, that how we can take the readings. So if now you will go towards the past paper questions, I am sure that you will be able to solve the question because all this, now what we have discussed in that this animated video, all of these was the past papers questions. Okay, now after this, I will show you about the, that how a sine wave formed uh, with that simulator. That's the quick review of CRO. Its parts is working with simulation activity. Look carefully. Just see here. This part is what cathode filament bombardment of the electrons, focusing, passing from the node, and going moving towards the X Y place. Have a keen watch. Pay attention. After passing both, see, so looking horizontally, but this is actually the y, y plates, looking vertically, so these are the X plates. After passing through them, the ray is going to fall, strike on the output, fluorescent screen, output display, which gives us the graphical present representation of all of the inputs, what we have supplied to it. And after this, I'm going to show you the very important part where you will see that how this sine wave forms when the beam of electrons deflect horizontally and vertically at the same time. So look over here. When it's moving vertically and horizontally at the same time, what happens? See, vertically and horizontally, it forms the sine waves. And with the help of which we can analyze, we can study all about it. So at the last, just I will give you the quick review of all the main parts of it, CRO. First thing, the definitions are very important, very but simple. Usually can define it that it is the electronic device with the help of which we can study graphically the voltage, uh, current and uh, different properties of the sound. And then the, the, what is main parts? It has the main parts like first six components forms the electron gun. Main part is electron gun, which consists of the filament, cathode, grid, and three anodes. So these three, uh, these uh, as, uh, these three components forms the uh, first portion from where there's the emission of the electrons. Then the three components of the anodes, which focus and accelerate very firstly and send towards the plates. So this combination of all the six components is called what? Electron gun. After that, two plates, horizontal plate, the vertical plates. I told you, explained well before here on the whiteboard explanation that the horizontal plates, what they do, they, they give the deflections to the spot, or to the uh, this whole beam of electrons horizontally along the x axis, and at the same time, they also produce the sawtooth voltage. But and we always provide the signals which we need to analyze, which we need to study, we are, for which we need any cal type of calculations to the Y plates, the Y input, which is also called the voltage gain, and then uh, it, which also gives the vertical deflections. So uh, after that, the last part is the output, the display, the screen, fluorescent screen, which gives us the graphical presentations, and then easily we can do the simple calculations. Uh, regarding to the notes of this topic, also this um, insight I will also mention in the descriptions below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe the channel if you didn't subscribe it. So see you in the next video. Please take care.